Welcome in everyone, ready for a deep dive into Goodrich. Let's do it. And just to be clear, we're going beyond the usual movie review stuff here. Right, we've got those two film reviews, totally different takes, plus that article about how the movie got made. Exactly, so we'll see if Goodrich is just feel-good fluff. Or something with a little more going on. Maybe both. I mean, you were telling me even before we got the reviews, something about Goodrich felt... I don't know, kind of classic Hollywood, but also very and nobody you. Yeah, it's like this weird mix. Just look at Michael Keaton and Mila Kunis headlining. Right, that casting. Apparently the director, Hallie Meyer Shire, was like, yep, it's them after one dinner. Whoa, really? Just like that. That's some serious gut impact filmmaking right there. It makes you wonder though, right? Like these days, casting seems so strategic, so much about who's hot right now. Totally. You'd think with big names, they'd pour over past performances, maybe do screen tests, but nope, one dinner. That's Hollywood for you. Yeah. But seriously, does that ever work? Like pure instinct leading to amazing chemistry on screen. Sometimes you just know, right? Or maybe it was a gamble that paid off big time. Who knows? Now that you mention it, Meyer Shire herself is fascinating. Oh yeah. Talk about Hollywood pedigree. Daughter of director Nancy Myers, screenwriter Charles Shire. She probably grew up on film sets. Talk about pressure. Trying to make your own mark with those two as your parents. Right. And get this, the article said Keaton was always her dream choice for the role, even shaped the character a bit around him. Wow, so it's like Keaton's in there twice, once as himself, once as this Andy Goodrich guy. Exactly. And Kunis, too, both of them, the article said they were blown away by the script, called it super honest, really realistic. Kunis specifically said the writing felt natural, which is funny because one review slammed the movie for being formulaic, you know? Hmm, that's interesting, like what the actors felt and what ended up on screen. Maybe two different things. And speaking of different, can we talk about that phrase one review used, gas leak cinema? I mean... What? Yeah, that's a head scratcher at first. But it's basically about movies so rich, so out of touch. That it's like we're watching something off, kind of unsettling. Yeah, like a dream world, but in a creepy way. And they specifically said that's Meyer Shire's style, not just this one film. It's like her movies are beautiful, but maybe missing that real life grit, you know? So is that deliberate, you think? Like she's going for that vibe on purpose? Or is it just who she is, how she sees the world, maybe because of her background. That's the question, right? Art imitating life, or in this case, maybe not imitating it so much. Good point. But before we get too deep into that, there's another thing that's kind of a head scratcher with Goodrich. What's that? They're actually releasing it in theaters, like actual movie theaters. Seriously, in the age of streaming, that's bold. Most movies like this would go straight to a platform. Right. But the article, they asked Kunis and Myers Shire about it, and they both kind of laughed. Oh no, what'd they say? Kunis joked that seeing a movie in theaters is like a novelty now, which is funny, but also kind of sad when you think about it. It's true though. Streaming has changed the game, for sure. Makes you wonder if Meyer Shire pushed for the theatrical release because of how personal this story is for her. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. The whole thing was inspired by her dad getting remarried, right? Mm. And her dealing with that whole new family. Yeah, so maybe that gas leak cinema label doesn't quite fit if it's coming from such a personal place, you know? Good point. Like, yeah, it's set in this wealthy world, but the feelings underneath, those are real no matter how much money you've got. Exactly. Like yeah. that saying, money can't buy happiness, but it sure can complicate things. And that's what makes this Goodrich thing so interesting, right? Mm -hmm. It's like this whole authentic but artificial thing at the same time. Yeah, tapping into real emotions, but in this heightened reality, kind of like... Like those old movies, everyone's dressed to the nines, even at breakfast. Exactly. But somehow you still feel those heartbreaks, the little joys. It's weird. It's about finding the truth under all that. Yeah. Right. And this is where those reviews, so different, they really get interesting. Because one was like heartwarming, predictable, crowd pleaser. The other went all gas leak cinema on us. But here's the thing. Both of them, they say the heart of the movie is Keaton and Kunis, that father-daughter thing. Which makes me think about Meyer Shire again, her own dad, that whole remarriage thing. Maybe that's why it feels real, even if the story's been done before. Like even in a cookie cutter plot, 
you can still find those little nuances. And Goodrich seems to have a lot of that going on. You've got Andy, the dad, workaholic, trying to connect with his daughter, who's what, in her 30s? And Grace, the daughter, she's still carrying all that baggage from the divorce. Then you've got the new wife, her own insecurities. Like, everyone's got their own stuff, their own reasons for acting out. And sometimes it takes a comedic crisis to bring it all out, right? Which I guess is where that winsomely absurd thing comes in from that one review. Like, it's acknowledging that families are awkward and funny. And who can't relate to that? Your own parents driving you nuts or those holiday gatherings. Everyone's got a story. Oh, tell me about it. But yeah, even if their lives on screen are nothing like ours, it's those little moments that get you. It's not about seeing your reflection exactly, but more like recognizing something true about people. So good, Rich. Yeah, it's set in this wealthy bubble, but it's still tapping into those universal things about family, messing up, all that. Like money might buy you a nicer mess, but it's still a mess, you know. And it doesn't mean everyone rides off into the sunset happily ever after, which is interesting because one review said the movie should focus more on the father-daughter thing, like it wasn't wrapped up neatly enough. That's a good point. Makes you think, was that intentional? Like real life is messy. Maybe she was going for that. Because sometimes those relationships, they take forever to heal, or they never do, and yeah. that's okay, right? Exactly. And maybe by showing that, Goodrich is being more honest than those movies that tie everything up with a bow. So it's less about giving answers and more about making you think, look at your own family, that kind of thing. Yeah. And that's powerful, right? To spark a conversation that lasts longer than the movie. It's not just entertainment, then. It's more like connecting with something, looking inward a little. And maybe even discovering something about yourself along the way. And that's the thing, with a movie like this, it makes you think, but it doesn't give you all the answers, you know? It's okay to hold both those ideas, the charming stuff, right. Andy, the critique. That's what makes it interesting. Right, like we're all a bit of a contradiction anyway, aren't we? Totally. And maybe that's what makes Goodrich work. It embraces that, instead of trying to be something it's not. It's not preachy, it's more like, here's some stuff to think about, you decide what it means. Which brings us back, full circle, is Goodrich more than just a feel-good family movie. After all this, I'm going to say, yeah, definitely more going on under the surface. Yeah, it works on different levels. You laugh, maybe you tear up a bit, but you're also left thinking about those bigger things. Family, forgiveness, all that, even if the ending isn't tied up in a bow. And hey, even with those cookie-cutter stories, there's always room for a surprise, right? Some little moment that gets to you. So to everyone listening, if you watch Good Rich, Go in with an open mind, yeah. Don't expect easy answers, but be ready for some real stuff. And remember, sometimes the best conversations, the ones that really make you think, they start with more questions than answers. Well said. And on that note, we're wrapping up this deep dive into Goodrich. Until next time, happy watching.